All right, flip geometry, it's been a while. Let's get into chapter six. Um, we are gonna be looking at uh, another category of shapes. We spent a long time with triangles. Now we're gonna let triangles sit on the shelf for a little bit and move into quadrilaterals. So um, this lecture has tons of vocabulary. I'm sorry at the outset, uh, your hand may hurt when we're done. Let's jump right into it so we don't make this any longer than it has to be, shall we? Let's get started. Here's some quick terminology we're gonna be using to define these different kinds of quadrilaterals. We're gonna talk about opposite sides, we're gonna talk about consecutive sides, opposite angles and consecutive angles. Um, opposite means obviously it's not the one next door, it's over there somewhere. Consecutive means it is the one next door. So if you're looking at an, a, an apartment building, you could have an opposite apartment like across some courtyard from you, or you could have your neighbor, your consecutive apartment, the one right next door to you. Similar in thought to adjacent, um, it's the structure right next to the structure you're talking about. So an opposite side is a side that's across the way, and a consecutive side would be the next side as you're going around the quadrilateral. Opposite angles are angles that are, that are across the, the figure from each other, and consecutive angles are angles that are right next to each other, the next angle that you encounter. We'll use these terms a lot coming up. The first quadrilateral we're going to talk about is a, is a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral where the opposite sides are congruent and the opposite sides are parallel. Um, and that means also that the opposite angles are congruent. So angle A and angle A are the same, angle B and angle B are the same. And then these two legs here, or these two sides of the parallelogram are congruent and parallel. And these two sides of the parallelogram are also congruent and parallel. That's a parallelogram. Now, if you take a parallelogram, and instead of having it kind of slanty like the last drawing was, if you have a parallelogram where the opposite sides are congruent and are parallel, um, and you also have all angles as 90 degrees, then you have a rectangle. Rect means right, so this is a right-angled quadrilateral where all four sides are 90 degrees. If all four sides are 90 degrees, then as a consequence, the opposite sides are congruent and parallel, and you have a rectangle. If you take a parallelogram and you allow it to be um, slanty, but you force all four sides to have the same measure, then now you have a rhombus. The opposite sides are parallel and all four sides are congruent. And the opposite angles are also congruent because it's still a parallelogram. It's just a particular kind of parallelogram. Interestingly, in a rhombus, the uh, diagonals formed uh, by the, the, the opposite sides, the opposite angles, will meet at a 90 degree angle. So this is a right angle intersection. Um, that's a rhombus. Four congruent uh, sides and the opposite sides are parallel, opposite angles are parallel, and the diagonals meet at a 90 degree angle. If you take a rhombus and force the angles to be 90 degrees, now you have a square. So it's a rhombus, which means that the opposite sides are parallel, all four sides are congruent, and the opposite angles are congruent. It's just that the opposite angles all happen to be 90 degrees. Now you have a rectangle meets a rhombus and, you, and their, their child is a square, okay? You're familiar with what a square is. A rectangle with four congruent sides, you could say it's a rhombus with four right angles. Um, there's a couple of ways to define this thing, but we all are pretty familiar with what they are. A shape that you may not be quite as familiar with is a kite. Um, and a kite has two pairs of congruent sides, but they're not opposite each other. They're consecutive sides that are congruent. So if this were a parallelogram, then the opposite sides would have to be parallel and congruent. Here, we have opposite sides that are neither parallel nor congruent, but the adjacent sides or the consecutive sides here are congruent. So this pair is congruent and this pair is congruent. And you wind up with something that looks like a kite. Let's go fly one of these. Um, one of the interesting things about a kite is just like a rhombus, the diagonals will meet at a 90 degree angle. Um, and so diagonal here and diagonal here intersects at a 90 degree angle. That's a kite. And lastly, a trapezoid. A trapezo trapezoid has two sides that are, uh, that are parallel and two sides that are not parallel. They don't, none of them have to be congruent, okay? So matter of fact, they usually aren't. So we have opposite parallel sides 
and opposite non-parallel sides. We label the parallel sides base 1 and base 2. These we would call legs, and the idea for that is that if you were to continue drawing these up, you would have a, a triangle of sorts. It's like a triangle that's been decapitated. It's a trapezoid. Um, the height of a trapezoid is important to be able to find. It's the um, right angle distance between the bases. Um, and so the, the line perpendicular to the, to the two bases, how long is that line? That's the height of the trapezoid. Um, because the length of the leg is not usually the same as the height. We have to make sure that we can find the height for doing things like finding area later on. So if we organize these things, we kind of have three groups of quadrilaterals. We have quadrilaterals with two opposite and parallel sides. We have, a, and there's only one of those, that's the trapezoid. We have a quadrilateral with no parallel sides, and that would be a kite. We have a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. They're all parallelograms. There's a particular kind of parallelogram called a rhombus, where the sides are uh, congruent, opposite sides, sorry, all four sides are congruent. There's a particular kind of parallel called a rectangle, and that's where the uh, angles are all 90 degrees. And then we have a shape that is always, that's uh, also a parallelogram and a rhombus and a rectangle, and that would be our friend Mr. Square. Okay, so these are all the quadrilaterals that we've just discussed. Let's look at a couple of examples to help us clarify these things here. Which of the uh, following categories, or which of the categories we just discussed, does each of these figures appear to belong to? Well, here I have a quadrilateral, and just eyeballing it, it looks like AB and DC are parallel and congruent, and it looks like BC and AD are also parallel and congruent. So it's at least a parallelogram. And then as I look at it, and again, without getting out a ruler, just kind of eyeballing, it looks like all of these are the same length. It looks like, in fact, I might have here a rhombus. Okay, Over here, I have uh, two sides that are parallel but not congruent, and another two sides that are neither parallel nor congruent. So this would be a trapezoid. Okay, Any questions about those, let me know. Let's go into another example. Find the measure of each side of the kite. Well, this is a kite, and so this is congruent to this. And even though it's not marked, by definition, if it's a kite, then this has to be congruent to this, right? So here I have x plus 5 equals 3x minus 1. I can use that and I can find out what x is. So jk and jm are congruent to each other. And so I can set them equal to each other. I can solve for x. x is 3 in this particular example. Then I can put that back in. And then I know that uh, jk is 3 plus 5, which is 8. And JM also has to be 8 because they're marked, but I'll just show you that it works, is 3 times 3 minus 1, which is also 8. Now I can do the same thing up here. KL is equal to LM because it's a kite, so the consecutive sides are congruent. And just like I did before, I can set this uh, parallel, I'm sorry, congruent to this, and solve for Y. And I discover that Y is 2, which means that KL must be 12. Uh, if you put in there 2 plus 2 is 4 times 3 is 12, and LM must be 12 as well. 2 times 5 is 12 plus 2, sorry, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Okay, that's another example of something you might do. Now, you can also use analytical geometry on a graph to, to figure out what sort of thing you have here. I could look at the points that are plotted, and I can calculate distance, and I can calculate slope. And I can prove to myself what I can kind of eyeball here and see that this is a square. But if I calculate the slope of ST, I find that it is negative two-thirds. And that that is also the same as slope for RU. So ST and RU are both negative two-thirds. And I can calculate the slope for UT and for RS and find out that it is three halves. Well, if they are negative reciprocals of each other, then those lines meet at 90 degree angles. So I have four 90 degree angles, it's at least a rectangle. And I can find the distance here using the distance formula, and I'll find out that no matter which side I compute, if I use the distance formula, I'll find that it is radical 13 in length. If all four sides are the same, then it is in fact a square. All right. All righty, uh, a couple of things. The quadrilateral angle sum theorem. 
the sum of the interior angle measures of any convex quadrilateral is 360 degrees. And that's easy to see. Because if you take a quadrilateral and you draw a diagonal, you've just cut that into two triangles. How many, uh, what's the total of the interior angles of, of a triangle? 180. If you have two of those triangles sitting together making a quadrilateral, you have 180 plus 180, you have 360 degrees. And this will lead us to an extrapolation in the very near future where you can determine the total interior angles of any quadrilateral, uh, sorry, of any uh, convex polygon. Uh, but here, we're just looking at a quadrilateral. Uh, any four-sided figure cut in half is two triangles. Each triangle represents 180 total interior degrees. So any quadrilateral represents 360 total interior degrees. Hey, how's this for very near future? We're looking at the total number of sides and the total number of, in, of angle measures inside that polygon. If it has four sides, we just showed that that's two triangles. And so each triangle represents 180 degrees. That means that any four-sided figure has a total interior angle measure of 360 degrees. Let's extrapolate that. If you have a five-sided figure, you could draw three triangles in that five-sided figure. Each triangle represents 180 degrees. 180 times 3 is 540. So any pentagon has 540 total degrees of interior measure. Um, you can see where this is going. A six-sided figure can be divided into four triangles for a total of 720 degrees. So any n-gon can be divided into n minus two triangles. And so it represents n minus two times 180 degrees total interior measure. This will be an important thing for you to have in your toolbox. This leads us to the convex polygon angle sum theorem, which states that the sum of the interior angle measures of any convex n-gon is n, n minus 2 times 180 degrees. So um, we just showed you that worked out on the last table. If you know the sides of a convex polygon, you can tell me the total interior angle measures of that polygon. Just a corollary that falls out of that is that this statement about the total angle sum measure of any convex polygon, if you know that that polygon is regular so that all the angles are the same measure, then you can divide this number by the number of angles and get the measure of every angle in that figure. So if you have a five-sided figure, a pentagon, five minus two is three, three times 180 is 540 degrees. There's 540 total angle degrees in a pentagon. But if I tell you it's a regular pentagon, then you say, oh, then you can divide that by five and discover that every angle of a regular pentagon measures 108 degrees, 540 divided by eight, five, sorry. Um, and so you can see how that works. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on this. We'll go through it in class. Now here's something a little weird. Um, we know that the, the total number of interior angle measures on a polygon changes based on the number of sides that it has, the number of angles, right? Triangle has three sides um, and the total number of interior angles is 180. A square, four sides, four angles, every, the total number is 360. We've been working on this idea. But interestingly, the sum of the measure of an exterior angle from each vertex of any convex n-gon is 360 degrees. If you take an exterior angle and you draw that exterior angle consistently on every vertex of a, of a convex polygon and you add them all up, it doesn't matter how many sides the convex polygon has, the sum of the exterior angles of all the vertexes on any polygon equals 360 degrees. It's the weirdest thing. I didn't believe it. I tried it a couple of different times and it's true. It's nuts. Um, we'll practice some more things with that tomorrow as we come together in class. But until then, you know, have a good time with quadrilaterals. Let me know what questions you have when we get together again. And until then, uh, God loves you and so do I. Have a great day.